Steve and Benoon, you're watching Israeli News Live. This would be one of those ones I'm sure that uh, Brother Paul Begley would say something biblical is going on. And of course, it'd be followed by, what are you serious? Well, Brother Begley, it is. This has just broke from Australia. The lake there uh, in one of the parks there in Victoria's Park there called, uh, it's actually called Westgate Park, has the lake has turned what would be called or described as blood red. It says why an Australian lake has turned pink. They're using the word pink there because I'm sure they want to kind of steer away from any kind of biblical connotations that this could carry. And I might also warn as well, it is not a biblical phenomenon, but rather scientists are saying the water is very low. The warm waters has brought in the algae and the algae is what has caused the water to turn this reddish color. Uh, something that's very abnormal for that particular area. I'll place a link for this in the, in the description below. But the reason why I say it's not biblical, all these things where we see the water turning to blood, is because Revelation 11, the witnesses here that we're speaking about, they prophesy exactly 1,203 score days clothed in sackcloth. That is, by the way, friends, if you look at a lunar calendar, the way the Jews were using it one time, now we do know that the, according to the Qumran scrolls, they also used a solar calendar of 365 days a year. But if you go by the 360 days in a year, which is what the Jews look at today, uh, this would be exactly three and a half years. Uh, I, th I find that very interesting, but if you go by the solar calendar, it also fulfills the prophecy about how that after their bodies are dead and they lay there for three and a half days, and then of course the judgment based on, um, uh, what is it, is in the book of Enoch, or actually maybe the apocalypse of Abraham, there's a judgment that falls upon the earth for like seven or eight days afterwards, which would fulfill the solar calendar prophecy perfectly. But again, verse six, these have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, prophecy and have power over waters to turn them to blood. So it's that time period that this happens. We're not looking at the time period that you see now. We are looking at a time period that is totally separate. So it's not what we're seeing today when we have these phenomenals that are created by other low waters, etc. But it's still clearly something uh, exciting to see when we see the water turn red like this. We realize that prophecy is on the verge of fulfilling when the witnesses are here on the scene. And again, clearly in Revelation, we can see that it cannot be Old and New Testament here. The prophecy lasts a specific amount of time. They are killed and their dead bodies, B-O-D-I-E-S, lay in the street dead for, for three and a half days. And again, it is a biblical sign. What is, why do they lay in there for three and a half days? Because you see the Jewish people say that Yeshua never was in the tomb, that it was a hoax, it was a hoax, it was faked, and that his body he wasn't in the tomb. Well, see, God sends two as a witness because Israel wants two or three for witnesses according to the law of Moses. And he sends two as a witness that the resurrection really did happen because they'll leave their bodies exposed in the street so everybody can see it. So kind of exciting if you ask me. Again, Zechariah, we brought this prophecy out the other day. And the chiefs of Judah shall say in their heart, the inhabitants of Jerusalem are my strength through the Lord of hosts, their God. Actually, that would be better to be called not just the chiefs of Judah, as I brought this out. If we look at the word here, Alufi, Alufi in modern terms are the champions of Judah, right? Well, let's look at what's happening in the news regarding this prophecy here. Top U.S. general in Israel to strengthen ties with the IDF. What do you know? That's here today, March the 8th, 2017. Top general, he's there strengthening the ties with Israel. Why? Because the Trump administration knows that this will bless them if they bless Israel. And not just that article either. Lieberman, uh, who is the, uh, uh, who is the uh, man there for, for the United States there, says, uh, two pence, we have true friends in the White House. True friends. Remember also the word can be translated as a chief friend. Uh, that is what we have over here in Zechariah. Alufi could be chief friends. Chief friends of Judah. What the house of Judah. And by the way, guys, I get so many people popping up in there and, and writing in there. Israel is not Israel. You know, it's not. it can't be Israel and everything because uh, it's, some of them will say it's Judah. It's only Judah there. I, I understand that. I do understand that. I, I, I'm not dense on these issues here. I realize we're missing nine tribes. Although the tribe of Manasseh in part has also returned home uh, thanks to um, uh, 
another uh, friend of mine there in Israel that helped bring them back. Uh, but anyway, that's a different subject altogether. But I did want to just share that with you. The house of Judah is seeing uh, biblical the, the prophecies here being fulfilled in the very fact in today's news, March the 8th, U.S. General and Israel to strengthen ties with the IDF. Also, Lieberman stating that we have true friends in the White House. This is something, friends, that has not happened. We've never seen the, the Israeli government speak like this uh, in its own history. The last time that Israel had a friend in, in the White House, it was singular, it was Richard Nixon. Uh, and when Golda Meir phoned him in the middle of the night and asked him to help them, that they were under war, or facing, uh, or really under siege, and that if, the, if Richard Nixon didn't do something, if the United States didn't do something, they would be obliterated. And Richard Nixon said he remembered the words of his mother when he was a child, telling him, prophesying over Richard Nixon that he would come to a place of, of power one day. And that there would come a time when Israel will need his help. And that at that time there, she said, do not forget them that God has called you for this purpose. And he was caught up with Watergate at that time and he did the very most unthinkable thing. He stood with Israel. Even when his own cabinet members were saying, let them bleed a little bit. Remember that statement? I forget the man that said that, but said, let them bleed a little bit but not Richard Nixon. He said he remembered the words of his mother when Golda Meir was talking to him. And the largest arms shipment that was ever done from the United States to Israel was done during the time of Richard Nixon that very night. Isn't it interesting? Time is repeating itself. Now they're calling the issue with Obama, Obamagate, like Watergate for the spy tapping that's being done, that was done on the Trump Tower. And there has been evidence, we'll bring that out in a little later broadcast today for you, new evidence emerging that there was indeed, in fact, authorized spying on President Donald Trump. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live again. As you can see here, the what many would call a biblical sign. Well, it definitely is letting us know there's coming a time in the very near future that the waters are going to turn to blood. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live.